having teammates or Nathan to come back and fight oh, you. Man. Both of them sound so awesome. I'm so excited to watch this. Brixis Midrange just took down Esper Midrange, mm -hmm. so Nathan knows how to do it against basically everybody not named Ely Cassis. Uh -huh. So we'll see if well, we you can never continue know. that. You yeah. could get one more shot at him, but uh, still has to get through Jacob Toth or Jakob Toth first. And that is going to be no easy feat. Both of these players are absolutely excellent. They are hungry. And they've already planned out their likeness, yeah. you know, their cards, should <laughs> they be the world champion. Yeah, you think so? They've already got oh, them yeah. mapped out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Counting we were just chatting chickens, to them. Huh? And, and Jakob just says to his fiance casually, oh, we, we get a card too. You know, <laughs> oh, as if okay. it's like locked in, ready to rock and roll, you know. So he is putting it out into the universe. He's basically said, I'm going to win this world championship. I love it. I love the confidence. And I love the demeanor of both players. They come out, they handshake, they're, they're mm -hmm. having fun when they come yeah. out. The second they hit the seats, game face. Oh yeah, game, game face, face is on. It, it's time to battle, it's time to get it going. It is indeed both players just getting ready to rock and roll here at the World Championship, live from Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, if you're gonna create your lucky stars, now is the time to do it. Let's hope that these top decks and these opening hands play nice as these players are ready to rock and roll. Here we go. One of these players is going to head to the finals to play against Ely Cassis, probably the biggest match of either of their lives. Huh, that was interesting. That was a draw first from Stoyer. Yep, uh, Jakob's on the play. Jakob's on the play here, Ed being the higher seed, so gets ah, to go yes. first. Uh, no matter what, but yeah, normally you don't choose uh, choose to go second <laughs> in these uh, mid-range matchups, that's for sure. That's for sure. Take a look at the opening hands here. Mm, not exactly what Nathan Storia wants to see. And on the other side of things, a couple of Plaza of Heroes there. Has some interaction and some aggressive threats in the Tenacious Underdog there for Jakob Toth. What do yep. you think of these hands? Kind of the opposite problems from both hands. Mm -hmm. You do have the a little bit too many lands here from Jakob, and then you have not enough for Nathan. Nathan being on the draw here, though, that makes this hand a lot better. Mm -hmm. If you can find that third land to, number one, get Liliana down and either deal with a creature or discard a creature, and then start corpse appraising away these, well, corpses in the <laughs> graveyard, then really got everything wrapped up with that end game of Invoke Despair as well. Oh, Invoke Despair is such a no Card. Oh, so if good. If you're able to fire it off and just get maximum value, you know, either there's one case, just hit all three permanents, yep. or just hit absolutely nothing at all and dome your opponent's death. Oh, it feels so good. Yeah. But it's difficult to cast. Very hard to cast, a very powerful card, but that's kind of why we don't see it as much in these Esper mid-range decks because you have cards like Wandering Emperor, you have mm. cards like AO. It just becomes too taxing on the mana to be trying to cast Wandering Emperor into a four black spell like Invoke Despair. Well, let's get things underway here. Both players getting their lands down on the battlefield. A couple of timely draws here as well, finding what we need to progress this board state here. Sanctious Underdog's gonna hit the board first. Shivan Reef, as well as the Blood Tithe Harvester, will meet on the battlefield here opposing this tenacious underdog. This is going to be a big draw step here for Nathan, not finding land number three mm -hmm. here. This is going to be huge. Another five drop off the top. We oh. see those glossed over there. That is not what Nathan wants, but if we can get that land number three, it kind of needs to be a black source as well for yeah. Liliana. That's most of Nathan's deck as well. Yeah. You know, these black base mid range decks have been the talk of the town essentially since Dominar United has released and since rotation has happened. So. No surprise to see it here represented so strongly this weekend. Right now, just the choice if Jakob wants to just attack that tenacious underdog in, mm -hmm. maybe Iganjo, the Blood Tithe Harvester, or just let it die, or Void Rend it. So a lot of decisions already on the third turn of the game. Yes, indeed. You see Void Rend there available to just get it out the way now. But on the other side of things, if the tenacious underdog and the Blood Tithe Harvester were to trade, that's also a pretty good deal indeed. But like you mentioned, Iganjo, Seat of the Empire, will take care of this Blood Tithe Harvester, so no sacrificing for Big that draw. creature. Is it allowed? There it, it is. is. Oh, that is perfect. Absolutely Excellent. perfect draw there for Nathan, being able to really unlock the hand. And not only that, that creature going to the graveyard, mm -hmm. you don't have to cast Liliana first, which Liliana the Veil being a very powerful card when you're up against just one creature on yeah. the other side of the battlefield. But when that creature is Tenacious Underdog <laughs> and it could come back uh, with the Blitz cost next turn, it, it's not as effective. Yeah. 
Corpse Appraiser would love to get that tenacious underdog, but as we saw, the Aganjo was able to take care of the blocker in the way there, so that's still hanging around. Shieldra, the Apocalypse could be coming out very shortly here for Jakob Tov. Yeah, and Nathan does have the answer to that with that uh, Infernal Grass, so not the end of the world mm -hmm. right now. Dis really, Nathan's choice there was between a land or picking up another spell there, but it was a Shivan Reef, so it didn't yeah. help with Invoke Despair, mm -hmm. so it didn't really help Nathan the way that he wanted. Yeah, I need to find these black sources of mana in the library, not uh, playing nice thus far, but here comes Shield of the Apocalypse, and we'll see this dealt with on the upkeep here before the trigger resolves, so no life loss. So important to do From at the that. upkeep before mm. you start getting those triggers off Shieldred just no. because mm -hmm. these mid-range battles are all about, you know, just small incremental advantages mm -hmm. instead of just winning well, you know, with huge amounts of life. Yeah, and the top of the library not being very kind here to Nathan Stoyer as he's unable to find the land and finds the land he didn't want in the Shivan Reef. So Shield's down here. Jakob would like to find something to add to the battlefield here. Now that that shield is in the in the graveyard. Yeah, Nathan, they're pretty much at parity here. Nathan doesn't know Jakob's hand is this bad right now. <laughs> Another terrible draw from Jakob off the top. Not, not able to find anything to progress the battlefield here. And only a Void rent to a Corpse Appraisal as an option. It's not really what, what mm. you want. But especially if Nathan could look at Jakob's hand, being able to just kind of shut the door with Invoke Despair into Invoke Despair oh, be so would rough. be the dream. That would be rough, but currently two lands away from that, or at least a treasure or something like that, as Invoke Despair is one and four black, so extremely taxing on the mana base. But extremely powerful, something oh, that tough to yeah. cast better be that strong. <laughs> it better be that good, it's like, <laughs> otherwise, why are you doing this to yourself? Exactly. Oh, goodness me. All right, Plaza of Heroes, what land is going to hit the board here? Three to pick from, from Jakub. Voidren still in the holster for him. Uh, let's see what we find. Mm, okay, Sandra's Lounge. Yep, that's one land. You'd rather have it now than an untapped and then that next turn. So now Nathan's going to have the option here of play Blood Tithe Harvester and leave Make dis Disappear mm -hmm. up to kind of be mana efficient like that, or just really go for Corpse Appraiser as the, you know, air quotes, better card to be playing right now. Mm -hmm. I would assume we're probably going to see Harvester with Make Disappear. You could even sacrifice that blood at end step and discard a spell to make sure you could lock up yeah. that fourth black source for Invoke Despair. Yeah, you'd love to see that from Nathan Story's side of things. And he's got the Blood Tithe Harvester highlighted, so it looks like that is going to be the first order of business here. Get that on the battlefield, get that Blood Token, as you mentioned, and uh, get this land on the battlefield, too. Coming down and now deciding if Void Ren wants to be cast right now. Not the best target. You know, you really mm. do want to be saving those for Shieldred. Yep. You know, that that is kind of the major one. Some other big targets as well out of the Grixis deck. Reflection of Kiki Jiki being yeah. another must-answer threat. But that's kind of the thing with these Grixis decks. That's how they're beating these Esper decks, is they're all must-answer threats. Yeah. They're all really powerful outside of, well, Corpse Appraiser and Blood Tithe <laughs> Harvester, the two options available. Blood Tithe Harvester is the target of the Void Ren. Destroyed target and non-land permanent. Uh, there he goes, back into the graveyard. More things for the Corpse Appraiser to chew upon. Infernal Grasp, the draw here for Jakob, who's just going to keep chipping away. And now all of a sudden, Nathan's story is down to seven, and that is pretty, pretty concerning. Yep, we're seeing these pain lands kind of doing some mm. damage here as well, which we've been kind of seeing all weekend in standard. The mana bases are good. Yeah. You know, I mean, they are really good, but they are at a cost mm -hmm. as standard has evolved right now. We'll see if Nathan prioritizes getting rid of Make Disappear now. Make Disappear now with this blood token or keeping it around. Hey. Takanuma off the top oh. does make Invoke oh. Despair available, but Nathan doesn't know that there's not another mm -hmm. Make Disappear, another counter spell from Jakob, so we'll see if we even go for it here. Uh, I, I would mean, assume we don't. You and I want to see it. Yeah. We're both just like, come on, do it. But, you know. Yeah, I, I think, it, I think this, this is the correct play. For just sure. making sure to not walk into Make Disappear right now. At least wait until you draw one more land, mm -hmm. so if you do make disappear, you at least have to get rid of Tenacious Underdog yeah. to casualty it. So Corpse Appraiser allowing Nathan to take a look at a couple cards. Let's see what options he has available to him, it looks like. We're going to get rid of that Blood Tithe Harvester in the graveyard. And finds another swamp, so not the best options there available to him. 
not the best, but absolutely not the worst here. That mm -hmm. Swamp does allow to be able to play that. Tap Shivan Reef for Blaxos's, leave Xander's Lounge and Shivan Reef available mm -hmm. to uh, cast Invoke Despair with Make Disappear. That's Nathan's game plan from here on out. And with another brick off the top from Jakob, it's going to work and it's going to be big. It is indeed. Zanxious Underdog swinging on in. We'll see the trade here with a Corpse Appraiser. So the life total stays at seven for Nathan. Stabilize in that regard. We're probably going to see Tenacious Underdog blitz from the graveyard right now post-combat. Yeah. Not the ideal scenario here, but just something to get some card advantage going. Mm -hmm. And that's going to send off the the kind of the, mm -hmm. the red the flags, bells. the alarms in <laughs> Nathan's head, like, oh, your hand must not be great. Yeah. Ottawara and Infernal Grasp available. Tenacious Underdog will deal two more points of damage here to Jakob. So down to 10. Yep. Also using probably, his life total. Probably going to untap there. That was leaving Infernal Grasp uncast, uncastable <laughs> there. Nobody wants that. <laughs> there we go. Tenacious Underdog back from the dead. Uh, just to die. Once more at the end. Steph is like, hi bye. Comes at a cost, though. That is another two life. Mm -hmm. Corpse Appraiser is three damage. Invoke to spare with no permanence on the battlefield. That's another six. That's Jakob at a potentially one, one life, life already in this huge match oh, to decide who goes up against Eli Cassis. All righty. Let's see, Nathan. Are you going to go for it here? First things first, let's get this three damage through. Infernal Gross says no. So just the two taken here from Jakob. So that unlocks Make Disappear here, mm -hmm. and with that damage, that's actually just game. That one pain from Caves is going to be three damage here to six. Invoke Despair for the win. That's it. Invoke Despair is going to pick up, well, excuse me, Nathan is going to pick up the victory with Invoke Despair in game number one here. So he's going to be very happy about that. And what we've seen so far is this Grixis midrange deck has a, an extremely strong matchup against this Esper midrange. You know, it, it's it's proving to be perhaps the Achilles heel of the most played deck this weekend. 100%. And we can look at this game where Jakob did keep a five lander on the mm -hmm. play with Tenacious Underdog and another spell, which is not bad when you're on the play. Tenacious Underdog being really the best two drop in this matchup, but then really just kind of got punished with land after land yeah. off the top, maybe drew one spell and then three land. That ratio, when you keep that land heavy of a hand, uh, is not going to get it done against a functional hand from Crix's <laughs> mid-range. And yeah, just, you know, continue applying pressure to the life total of Jakob Torf, allowing that Invoke Despair to be the finisher in that matchup. You know, it's it's a great game plan to deploy. You know, don't, don't give the opponent enough time to find an answer to come back Absolutely. to gain life. Absolutely, and then looking at the sideboard here, one of the major cards that's coming in here is a one drop which seems pretty harmless here, but when it's kicked, Rona's Vortex mm. being able to deal with AO or Sancti uh, Sanctifier Warden there being the most important thing yeah. and the most important threat post-board uh, up against this Esper mid-range deck. Yeah, we saw Nathan do that in an early round today as well, just you know, kicking that yeah. Rona's Vortex, sending AO away. So no death triggers. You know, there's not that many exile effects in these lists, so you know the Dawn Sky, if you can get rid of it, in a way that doesn't result in it dying, you're going to be happy to do exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. And that's kind of what the players, Jakob Toth, Ili Cassis, and the rest of their teammates were really mm -hmm. hoping that people would do is not have a lot of ways to exile AO post board. And so far, yeah. it's really worked out for them uh, in this tournament. Uh, but Nathan did come prepared with quite a few answers to the powerful five drop. <laughs> All righty, let's go. Game number two, Nathan Stoyer up one thus far against Jakob Toth. This is the lower final, so whoever loses here, unfortunately, that is the end of their world championship journey. But whoever wins goes on to face Ely Cassis. And then we will find our champion, Corey. Exactly. Jakob Toth with a mulligan there, a six lander on the play here, just having two lands. A Denik, a nice play, as, as well as an Infernal Grasp and a Gate for some interaction. But without any lands off the top, mm. this is Jakob Toth with back up against the wall. There's no more wiggle room for him. There isn't. He needs to win this game to continue his journey here. On the other side of things, Infernal Grasp, Make Disappear, Blood Tithe Harvester, and a Corpse Appraiser. So Nathan's a lovely, head is good. Yeah, very good. A lovely one to punch here. Reactive Permission, Removal Spells. He's got basically everything he needs right now to deal with whatever Jakob's going to throw out. Let's pay attention to Nathan's face cam here. I bet we're going to see an eyebrow raise without a land. 
missing a third land drop here when there's so many important three drops is extremely beneficial to, to Nathan here. Sure is. Infernal Gross. Consideration here for Nathan, perhaps. Is this worth killing right now? I think he thinks so. Just if Nathan wants to be mana efficient here, that's mm -hmm. really what it's all about. The nice thing about killing Denik is not only is it food for Corpse Appraiser, but it's also Corpse Appraiser is live. You cannot actually appraise any of the corpses <laughs> with Denik on the battlefield. I'm sure Denik would be a lovely corpse to appraise. So now here's the thing. Negate was... If, if Fable is gone for right here, you have the negate for yeah. it, but if we have Corpse Appraiser, it's the perfect card to yeah. play up against Jakob's hand, and it's going to work out quite well here. I mean, that's just a gift, right? Denik in the graveyard, and Corpse yeah. Appraiser gets to get that out of there? Heck yeah. Yep, that was excellent here for Nathan. And now a big draw, big moment here for Jakob Toth. Needs a third land to keep up here with Nathan Stoyer. <sighs> doesn't find it, he gets a four drop instead in the Wandering Emperor, and that is bad news bears indeed. The lands keep coming for Nathan Stoyer, Rona's Vortex, the card we mentioned earlier as well now. We're going to see Blood Tithe Harvest to hit the battlefield, leaving up the Make Disappear, or a potential cycle or discard with the token. Oh my goodness oh, Not me. like this, not, not like, like this, says Jakob Toth. And Nathan really unflinched so far, you know, recognizes the advantage that he's in, but yep. it's still business. This, yep. this game's not done. And if you can get lands off the top when you have six spells in hand, which is very clear, yep. when you're not making land drops, Jakob can definitely get back in this, but it's got to start with a land drop here very shortly, if not yep. for sure next turn. Careful tapping here from Nathan Stoyer is going to deploy Fable of the Mirror Breaker with Make Disappear back up. Negate in hand for Jakob. It's not going to resolve, unfortunately, for him. And you've got to think, without a third land, this is all but over. And even with a third land from Jakob, if you go wedding announcement, that Invoke Despair is clear oh. for takeoff. Oh, you've got to wow. be kidding me. This is heartbreaking stuff here for Jakob, not finding a third land. Infernal Grasp off the top just to try and stave off the damage. But you can see disappointment in his face right now. Just unable to keep up here with Nathan Stoyer, who's snowballing his advantage. Now you know Invoke Despair is clear for takeoff with that clean three for one, get a bunch of cards, lose six life. Fable the Mirror Breaker discarding no cards. That's never what you want to see on the opposite mm -mm. side of the table. You got to know that hand is gas. Here comes Corpse Appraiser, not going for Invoke Despair. He's just going to keep adding to this battlefield here. Exile, the Blood Tithe Harvester finds another copy of Fable the Mirror Breaker to add to his collection. And this is about to be, I'm, Here <laughs> gonna it comes. I've got to say it, unfortunately, this is about to be the, f <laughs> yeah, I think the this end is of it. this game. Nathan Stoyer is going to end up facing Ely Cassis in a <laughs> super unfortunate fashion here. Jakob Toth unable to find land number three, still no third land for him. Yep, Jakob's deck just really not cooperating in mm -mm. any way. Game one, all lands. Game two, no lands. That is magic. It, it definitely has variance at times, but you gotta not want to yeah. see it end this way <sighs> if you're a Jakob Man. fan or just a Magic fan in general. Oh, I'm such a fan. What can you do? Salutes to the crowd. Congratulations, though, to Nathan Stoyer. A clean 2-0 in the lower finals. And he is going to carry on to face Ely Cassis.